Now, we go back to Rotherham, where we are joined by the town's uh, MP, uh, Labour MP, Sarah Champion. Sarah Champion, welcome to The Daily Politics. Uh, given the appalling record of uh, the Labour Council there, uh, particularly since it involved the most vulnerable in society, why should anybody vote Labour again in Rotherham? Um, well, I think what we need to focus on is it was both the council and the police. And uh, while you say it's a Labour council, it's actually a whole group of people that uh, led to this absolute disaster. What I want to focus on, though, is the victims, and they are still not getting enough support. I met with David Cameron on Wednesday to ask for more support. I've been asking since the J report came out six months ago, and still here on the ground, we've got nothing. Right. Uh, I understand that, and of course the victims are the most important in this, but I would just like to concentrate Absolutely. for a bit on uh, why they became victims in the first place. And if you look at... Uh, what has happened in Rotherham? The previous MP for your seat ended uh, up in jail for an expenses uh, misdemeanours. The whole council has had to be wiped out and start again there as well. Mm -hmm. So I say again, why would anybody vote Labour in your town again, given this record, at least for a generation? Uh, well, you could go to Oxford, where, you know, it's uh, half of the council is Tories, so I don't think it's right to make this a political issue. What this is about but, is institutions failing young people. It's happening all over the country, but, regardless of who the MPs are, regardless of who the councils are. Yeah, but hold on. Hold on. This, this is a one-party state. This is a Rotherham was entirely dominated by the Labour Party. It was the Labour Party that appointed all the officials who let these kids down. It was the council that let people down. There seems to have been cover-ups in a number of areas. Your council is in denial. If this isn't political, what is? Um, I don't dispute any of those failings. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is this shouldn't be about party politics. I mean, the very fact we've got Farage here today rubbernecking at victims, trying to make it into a political issue, is one of the most disgusting displays that I've ever seen. This isn't about politics. This is about victims, young people across the country being let down and about the government, as well as the councils, as well as the police, not doing anything about it. Well, when Jack Straw four years ago said that there was a specific problem in places like Rotherham, and this, these are here words, where mm -hmm. Pakistani men target vulnerable young white girls and they view them, quote his mm -hmm. words, as easy meat. He was pilloried for these mm -hmm. comments, including by a lot of people in your party. He was right, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, well, also... Well, he was right, and Anne Cryer was right as well when she raised this as an issue, and uh, it's something that we all need to address. But my concern at the moment is this is still going on in the country, and still we're trying to sort of put it under the carpet. And for me, making it into a political issue then makes it into a ping-pong rather than a national concern that we need to be addressing as a national issue. Yes, but people, I think, are also looking for justice and for, uh, and for people to be brought to account for this. Is it not right Absolutely. that when we look at the contents of the two reports we've had that there should be criminal charges brought against people? I completely agree with you. Um, I, I think that both uh, sort of internal disciplinary needs to happen because these are paid people, paid to look after children, they've not done that. But also, if there is criminal action that needs to be brought, then it should be. What do you say to the former deputy Labour leader of your council, Mr Akhtar, who's refused to apologise for what's happened? Um, I actually heard him apologise very early on. Uh, if he's refusing now, then I think that's the, absolutely the wrong thing that he should be doing. Uh, we all need to acknowledge that this happened under, you know, a 15-year period, and I think everybody responsible that was in office at that time, but also that was an officer at that time, needs to look into their hearts and see if they could have done more. And what do you think of the record of Mr Sean Wright, who was uh, head of Rotherham Children's Services and the Labour South Yorkshire Police Commissioner, who effectively had to be forced out of his job and has been reluctant to apologise for his behaviour too? What do you say to his record? Mm. Um, again, I think that he, uh, well, 
when the, it first came out, uh, I was one of the first people to call for him to resign because this happened all under his watch. Um, if he's not apologising, then I think that's absolutely the wrong thing because all the victims and survivors that I meet, what they actually want is acknowledgement that people failed them. You know, that, that's the biggest thing they want. Then they want justice. And then the most important, I guess, is they don't want this to happen to anyone else. And that's what I really think we need to be focusing on I, now. I, How what, can we stop this happening to anyone else? Yeah, but we can't stop this happening without uh, finding out what happened in the past and for people to realise the mistakes you made. So what do you say to Roger Stone, Agreed. the former <coughs> Labour leader of the council, who refused even to cooperate with the investigations? Um, I was disgusted that he wouldn't get involved. I mean, the only way that we can move forward from this, as you've just said, is if we analyse what went wrong so that we can prevent it happening again. The fact that Roger Stone wouldn't even meet with Louise Casey, uh, to, to me, I, I think is totally, totally wrong. I mean, in some ways, when I look at this and the main participants, it reminds me of the bankers, of the bankers who brought this country to its <laughs> knees. Uh, none of these bankers ended up in jail or really suffered much of a penalty. They all seem to live pretty good lives. And I now look at, at your political, your po Labour politicians there, and then I look at uh, Mr Fitzgerald, who was the chief executive of your council, appointed by Labour, accused of ignoring reports. He's now running Liverpool Council and £199,000 a year. Jackie Wilson, in charge of safeguarding children at the height of the abuse scandal. That didn't do too well. She's now being paid 90000 a year as assistant director in Doncaster for what? Children's services. Or Mark Edgedal, the council leader, your Labour council leader, accused of failing to provide <coughs> resources to stop this from happening. He's now a principal advisor to the local government authority on what? Children's services. Aren't people looking at that right mm. to be appalled by what's happened? And the inability to bring they anybody to right. account. And the inability to bring anybody to account. Uh, could you say that again? And the inability to bring anybody to account. No, I completely agree with you, and we've raised this question in the House because these people, they're sort of making a career out of this. They're on massive salaries. They're going from one job to another, and, uh, and these are people that are meant to be protecting our children, and it's clearly transparent that they haven't been protecting our children. So, I mean, I've actually, as soon as this broke, I wrote to the council and asked them to investigate some of the people that you've named because uh, the fact that they're still working in children's services, my goodness, that something is very wrong with this country. When you read the Casey report carefully and the previous report as well, which was only a year before, mm -hmm. uh, although the reports mm -hmm. don't say this, it would suggest to me a fruitful line of investigation as whether there were cover-ups going on. That is not only that these, mm -hmm. there are a number of the people in the Labour Council and on the, both the politicians and the officials, not only uh, it was a case that they looked the other way, but actually that they helped to cover up. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, unfortunately, I do agree with that. Uh, and I've been uh, reported a number of um, sort of uh, council staff and also uh, police to their investigation bodies uh, and also to the police themselves because something has gone very, very wrong. There has definitely been multiple okay. failings. And after a time and, and, you know, things keeping on going wrong, you start to wonder if it's more than a coincidence. Interesting point. Uh, you, you tweeted about half an hour ago that it was, quote, hilarious that Mr Farage was locked up in his office. Uh, why do you find that funny? Because he came here to try and point score. Um, and uh, it's like... That's what politicians do. Some sort of voyeuristic tourism that's going on. Uh, well, I, I don't think that they should. Um, and that's really? why I'm very keen that we address the issue rather than point scoring on it. So the fact that he came here with his circus um, and has ended up barricaded in his shop with people in Rotherham who are saying this is absolutely disgusting. We don't want you coming and trying to get elected off the back of the abuse that's been going on in our town. Uh, I do find that funny because the people of Rotherham know what's right and what's wrong. You might not find it so funny on May the 7th with UKIP, if we, UKIP wins your seat. They're a strong second, aren't they? Um, they are indeed a strong second, and if they do win, then I hope that they do as much as I've done to try and prevent this crime. Sarah Champion, thanks for, for joining us. It's good to talk to you.